The number one metaphor I have for writing a screenplay in my mind is that you're trying to climb a tree with your eyes closed. And the funny thing about that is you think, okay, that's hard because you're climbing up a giant lump of wood and you don't know where you're going and you don't know where the top is and you can't see what's below you. But actually the hardest part about climbing a tree with your eyes closed is just finding the tree. Hey everybody, I'm Jared Pardoon, the pretend screenwriter of the Ua movie. Now, in my family, there's a lot of people I know and love who give me ideas for a DVD or CD to make, but I'm the guy who actually has to sit down and make them on a computer. So when I started working on the Ua movie, I had a hard time getting the story set up in the right way. And I think this is a common problem with screenwriting in your head. A lot of times when a fanfiction doesn't work, it seems like the problem is with the ending. But in fact, the seeds of failure have been planted at the beginning. So, on the Ua movie, after several months of sort of floundering around and going in circles... I finally decided to sit down and watch The Emperor's New Groove and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and Yogi Bear and figure out, well, how do they set up their characters and their worlds and their stories? So this is something I learned while watching movies. How to write a good beginning. Usually, a script is about 100 pages long with three acts. And the first act is 25 pages long, the second act is about 50 pages, and the third act is the last 25. Now you start your first act by setting up your hero in his or her world. And by page 25, you've given your hero a goal and set them off on the journey that will take them to the second act. So let's begin at the beginning. Page one, introducing your main character. So usually what you do when you're introducing your main character is you show them doing the thing they love most. Like, this is their grand passion. It's their defining trait. It's the center of their whole universe. So in Cusco's case, he's introduced being the Emperor. And that's his favorite thing. Like, that's the thing that defines who he is as a person. With Flint, Flint's an inventor. You know, his mom gave him a lab coat, he has his own laboratory in his family's backyard, and he couldn't be happier. And then with Yogi Bear, you introduce Yogi stealing picnic baskets from people who visit Jellystone Park. So you start with your main character, you introduce the universe they live in, and you show your hero doing the thing they love to do most. But then your character needs one more thing. She needs a flaw. Now what's key here is that your character's flaw actually comes out of her grand passion. It's a good thing that's just been taken too far. So in Cusco's case, he takes pride in being the Emperor. He loves being the Emperor so much that he doesn't want to share that with anyone. In the case of Cloudy, Flint wants so badly to be a great inventor and make his father happy that he's a little bit insecure. With Yogi Bear, Yogi's a little bit like Cusco in that he takes pride of stealing picnic baskets from people and he doesn't want to share that with anyone. Like you see it when he's with Boo Boo and you see it again when Ranger Smith comes along. So you establish your character, you establish the world they live in, you establish the grand passion that they're defined by and you establish a hidden flaw that comes out of this grand passion. And then you want to establish the storm clouds on the horizon, which is your characters walking down the road of life. It's a nice, bright, sunny day. 
But off there on the horizon, there's some dark storm clouds gathering. So in the case of the Emperor's new groove, Cusco fires Yzma and she wants to get rid of him for it. So she and Kronk set up a dinner for Cusco with a goblet of poison. But what they don't know is that Cusco is about to drink a llama potion. With Cloudy, you set up the fact that Flint's dad, Tim Lockwood, wants him to stop inventing and work with him full time at the tackle shop. And then for Yogi Bear, Ranger Smith is saying to Yogi, this park is about to turn 100 years old, so stop running around stealing food from people. And then you have Mayor Brown showing up, saying he's going to rezone Jellystone Park by cutting down the trees. So you're establishing that Mayor Brown has an evil plan for Jellystone, and you're establishing Ranger Smith saying to Yogi, look, stop stealing food. So you establish your main character, you have what they're defined by, you have a hidden flaw, you establish storm clouds on the horizon, and then, ba-boom! Something comes, up, something comes in and totally blows apart your hero's life and turns it upside down. So in the case of the Emperor's New Groove, Cusco drinks the potion and gets turned into a llama. Yzma then tells Kronk to put Cusco in a body bag and get rid of him for good. And in Cloudy, the grand opening of Sardine Land comes along, while Flint tries to test out his new invention that turns water into food. He then ruins the big day for the whole town of Swallow Falls by making his, in his new invention blast off into the sky and everyone is mad at him for it. In Yogi Bear, Joey Stone Park's 100th anniversary celebration comes along, and Yogi does his water skiing routine, but then he accidentally sets his cape on fire, which then manages to set off the fireworks, and ba-boom! The park is totally destroyed. And in each of these cases, if you go back and look at what their grand passion was, Cusco being the emperor, Flint and his love for inventing... Yogi stealing picnic baskets, that's the thing that gets taken away from them. It totally changes your character's sense of what his or her future is going to be. But that bowl from the blue, ba-boom, isn't enough on its own. It's not enough just to ruin your character's life and take away their grand passion and change their whole sense of what the future is going to be. You gotta add insult to injury. You gotta have something that's gonna make the whole world seem a little bit unfair. So not only does Cusco get turned into a llama, as well as dethroned by Yzma, but he also ends up with this peasant named Pacha. And they get into this whole argument about whether Pacha kidnapped Cusco or not, and the key here is that these two are fighting for the wrong reasons. In the case of Cloudy, you don't really need you don't need to really add insult to injury. We already understand that the world Lint lives in is unfair. But on the other hand, with Yogi Bear, the reason why Jellystone ends up shutting down is that Yogi was just trying to save the park. So now your main character's life has changed, her grand passion has been taken away, the world has revealed itself to be unfair, and she comes to a fork in the road. And she's going to have to make a choice on how to deal with her new reality. There's a high road to take, a healthy responsible choice, or a low road to take and make an unhealthy, irresponsible choice. And remember, if your character chooses to do the right thing, you really don't have a story. For Cusco, the healthy choice is to say, Look, I had my time in the sun, I was the emperor for a long time, and I have to see the spotlight at a certain point. 
But what happens is that Cusco makes the unhealthy choice. Cusco tries to get back to the palace. And the key thing here is that we're rooting for Cusco to, to, to do the unhealthy, irresponsible thing because we feel his pain at getting turned into a llama. So your character's unhealthy choice, Cusco's unhealthy choice, creates a crisis walking into the jungle while ignoring Pacha's warning when he says, you can't go back to the palace until... Until you change your mind about building your summer home on my village. And that's your first act break. You see a similar thing in Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs when Flint's new invention goes haywire and giant food starts falling from the sky. Flint's unhealthy choice, listening to the mayor, comes out of his grand passion, his love for inventing, and his unhealthy choice provokes a crisis resulting in a spaghetti twister coming along, Sam Sparks leaving him, and the falling food destroys almost all the world's landmarks. And now Flint has a goal that's going to take him all the way through the rest of the story. With Yogi Bear, the responsible choice is for Yogi to listen to Ranger Smith. But that would be boring, and you'd have no story. So the irresponsible choice for Yogi is to give up being a regular bear and go to the city to find Ranger Smith. And we're totally rooting for Yogi to make the irresponsible choice, because we saw how much he loved trying to steal picnic baskets, we saw how good he was at it, and we saw how unfairly it was taken away from him. And that unhealthy choice, going back to his old ways, leads to Yogi and Boo Boo reuniting with Ranger Smith at Evergreen Park, and you're off into your second act. So your story is coming out of your character's deepest desires and their darkest fears. The thing they love gets taken away from them, and the world is revealed to be unfair. To put things right, they have to make the journey that is the rest of the film. And by the end of the journey, hopefully, they'll not only get back what they lost, but they'll be forced to fix that little flaw they had when we first met them. So that's what I learned while watching movies. And I'm not saying that all stories have to start this way. But if your brain is writing a script and it's having a hard time getting started, I hope these ideas are helpful.